Hey, real quick before the video starts, I will be talking about everything from the past four years, including all of these games. So I guess this is your spoiler alert if there's games you haven't experienced for yourselves, so beware. Also, there's quite a lot of story stuff in this video, but since I can't animate, it's just a black screen. However, every time you see this, that means that I'm talking. Every time you see this, someone else is talking. That's your proof that the video didn't just die, okay? I don't really know where to start. Why don't you start at the beginning? Okay, um, can I... This, this may seem weird, but I can I talk about this as if it's a video? I've prepared a little script as well. Sure, of course, go ahead. Okay, so, um... Hello everyone, and welcome to the start of Season 4. I first recorded this video without scripts. The recording was five hours long and it was the most boring thing I've ever made with the simple reason I just started stories without actually finishing them. I never came to a point which is what I will be trying to do today. Let's go back in time nearly four years. October 30th, 2019. That's when Tijil made the channel, came up with the name The Good Life Horizons and proposed to me a while later if I wanted to join him. I said yes. I had a fairly good idea of the kind of videos I wanted to make, being the following. I would record an entire game and then pick out the best part to spread through a few episodes. The pacing would be okay, the episodes would be big, and I would have the ability to do something creative with it in editing. Tijil's idea of videos was different. He was going to turn his content into a more let's play style. He would record for an hour and then barely edit at all because he wanted to show every little thing of the game. Now this concept works, but only sometimes. Games that no one has ever heard of, like Samurai Jack, Bomb Chicken, and later Alligator, were his first few picks, and yes, they're also in the intro of Season 1, while my first picks were Celeste, Hollow Knight, and Super Meat Boy. Our different style in videos would turn the channel into a pick-and-choose playground for viewers, but that's where our differences became clear. I wanted to make videos to do something, to express my creativity, and to have something to do to fill the void of my boring life, hence the nickname. Tijil was fairly focused on the views, but more than anything, it was difficult to combine the sheer amount of effort that went into making videos and keeping up with our college lessons. While Tijil dropped out of the channel and focused on school, I eventually dropped out of school while focusing on the channel. And thus, The Good Life Horizons was born. There isn't really a lot to say about either Celeste or Hollow Knight, apart from the fact that the audio quality is horrible due to the $20 headset microphone I was using, and the video quality was terrible due to the complexity of recording and editing. You see, I recorded on PS4 because it was the only free option available. And when a 60 minute recording was done, I would upload it to a different channel, then download it on my laptop and then edit that 720p file in Movie Maker 2016 and render it as a 1080p file, after which I would upload the finished product on the main channel. This cost for a decrease in quality, but a big increase in the amount of fun I was having, because I finally had something to do. My favorite moment has to be the music you hear right now, where it's just like, Hey drummer, can you go FUCKING NUTS? And my favorite self-created moment has to be the final screen of Farewell. It took me three hours already, and it just is the coolest moment of that series. Dash jump, dash, grab. Bounce. Throw, dash, grab, bounce, throw, dash, bounce, dash, grab, go down, spring, throw, dash, get thrown, dash again, grab again, bounce, throw, bird, dash, spring, grab, throw, dash, grab, go down, spring, dash, bird, dash, grab. The first Hollow Knight series has not much to write home about, apart from my reaction when I finally struck down the Radiance in the Pantheon of Hollow Nest. Did we do it? Oh my fucking god, yes! 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 No way! Oh my god! Oh, die, you motherfucking! Mm. <laughs> Yes! Oh my god! We finally did it! <laughs> I also did this in the morning after I went out to a party, so imagine my surprise when I finally get it when I'm still really hungover. 
Oh, one thing about these. I still didn't figure out what the full clear of Farewell is, but somehow I got it. I also got the Platinum Trophy for both Celeste and Hollow Knight, so the chance that these games will return is basically nil. I will probably be discussing the possible return of every game every time I talk about said game, so beware, this video is just getting started. Super Meat Boy was a new idea on a game I had already played before YouTube, but I wanted to have a twist, and so Super Meat Boy Without Running was created. If I could do the series again, there would be a couple of things I'd change, being the video quality, the audio quality, the final recap, that would probably be a separate video, the save file, which I should have reset to a blank save file, and the overview of what's possible and impossible. I should have used the spreadsheet and I didn't. Super Meat Boy's Platinum Trophy has not been obtained as of yet, but I can say that I got the Deathless Trophies for all of the first four chapters, both Light and Dark World, and for the Rapture's Light World. If, God forbid, I at some point return to this game, it's either going to be a proper runless run recap video or a Platinum Trophy experience video. Is it gonna come back in the near future? Probably not. Can it come back? Definitely. One thing that I cannot and will not come back to ever is me doing reviews or reactions to movies. Example 1, the Marvel fucking cinematic fucking universe. Doing reaction videos on movies that you've already seen before is already a stretch, but doing it in awful quality without face cam is a nightmare. You know what's also a nightmare? Trying to upload videos with over 10 copyright strikes. So I uploaded those videos, they got striked, I re-edited them in Movie Maker instead of just doing that in YouTube, decreasing quality again and then uploaded them. And then I got another strike. After doing this for the last video for over 10 times, I just said, Ah, oh, fuck it! And placed this ugly ass watermark in the world's most disgusting font ever over the entire screen and I can't, for the life of me, figure out what the thought process was. The best part is, I tried this idea again. I was watching a series called Bates Motel at the time, the prequel series to Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho from 1960. I was planning on doing live reactions, but when I came to season 2 and the same copyright issue started again, I replaced it with another series. Detroit Become Human, Sundered Eldritch Edition and Shadow of the Colossus, and Actually Until Dawn 2 were the type of games where I enjoyed the process, but I could have done better. Although in my defense, at the time, I was doing the best I could with the tools and knowledge I had. Could I redo all those games? I would put way more story in Detroit Become Humans episodes, I would change the pacing and quality on Sundered and Shadow of the Colossus, and I would rebalance the audio in Until Dawn. There are actual moments where the game is so loud that you can't even hear my commentary. But my microphone didn't spike throughout Until Dawn, and I got the best scream out of it. Left or right, left or right, where's the elevator? Go right, right is all over. Ah! The fuck are you? Then we come to the final series of Season 1, which I called Super Mario Games Done Quick, instead of naming it All Mario Games Any Percent. I have a billion issues with this series, but the biggest one is the complexity of how I record it. Why is there so much empty space on the screen? Why didn't I layer live split over the game? Why didn't I record on my Wii instead of a 70% constant speed emulator on a $300 laptop? After everything though, I am happy that I did the series. It was an experience and it gave me a good idea for Season 3, but we'll get there when we get there, because first, there's Season 2. I started with Cuphead, which has horrible pacing, and then came God of War. This is where I discovered green screen edits, but I wasn't really good at it. I also realized that on a story-based game, I needed to put in more of the cutscenes, and so I tried. I think I did it better than with the Tory Become Human, but it still wasn't great. I think one of my favorite edits in Cuphead has to be me non-stop dying to the bee lady. It's like an hour of footage compiled into one big edit, making it entertaining to watch and not go too slow. I should also mention the episode amount for each game. In Season 1, I was obsessed with three main episodes and one bonus episode each time. In Season 2, that changed. I wanted to make five episodes for each game, with one exception though, but more on that in a sec. The initial plan for Cuphead was to make four episodes of the base game and do the DLC with Tijol, but since it took so long to release, I just went wild with editing. I kind of liked that last video, to be honest. It's like pure chaos and memes, but yeah, I had fun with it. The DLC eventually came later, but we'll talk about that more when it's relevant. Now I said something about five episodes each time, with one exception, being Super Mario Odyssey Coinless. This is the series that basically put me on the map. I made one episode on the base game, or the any percent, and then six more building on that, collecting as many moons as I could without coins. 
Then I made one more episode where I researched impossible moons and tried to find out the minimum amount of coins, getting me to 8 episodes. And finally, I made two scripted videos that did way better than I could ever imagine. I gained 300 subs and I think one of those episodes has like 42,000 views, which is absolutely wild. I never ask people to subscribe because I literally do not care, and it's also not the reason why I do it and why I keep doing it. I do this because I want to have a hobby. However, the insane views that video got was kind of crazy. The one issue with doing a challenge for a game, for me at least, is that I put so unbelievably much work in it, and I kind of enjoy my big playthroughs as well. So sometimes I do these challenges, but if I were to release content only revolving around these weird ideas, I would not keep on doing YouTube. It just isn't fun to keep putting so much effort in a video when I'm not really having fun. I really like the editing reel with the music I got out of that series in the end. It was like a compilation of all the coolest moments right after revealing that on my own I managed to get like 735 moons coinless. Then I did two batches of five random games, which is one of the ideas that stuck. I really love doing one episode for one game sometimes, because I can be so much more creative in my editing and my style. Obviously in the beginning there wasn't really any of that, but I remember doing Peggle, which has- yup, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. As a start, I know Polybridge, which is the only video on the channel that I didn't edit. That one was edited by a friend of mine. I remember Ultimate Epic Battle Simulator, where I added the classical music. I remember the Cuphead DLC, which I played on release, but only uploaded months later. And I actually was planning on doing that with Teachel, but I got too excited and I already recorded it when it came out. But then again, Teachel watched Man vs. B without me, so we're even now. I remember Mario Party 9, Gang Beast with LJ, Wii Sports Resort and Heavenly bodies with Tijol. I mean, there's just so many cool concepts and ideas that I still have that I want to use in that kind of videos, and I will get to them eventually. And one of the standalone games might come back. But I'm getting a little off track, I will talk about this later. Anyway, the Random Game series first wasn't called Random Games, and it also didn't have the titles and thumbnails that the first few episodes have now. The first batch was called Silly Standalones, and the second batch was called Infinite Independence. Add to that the fact that any series ever was always called The Full Experience, any movie marathon was called The Monumental Marathon, and all challengers were named The Greatest Challenges. So yeah, all those names are fucking terrible names that doesn't describe the video or series at all, so I dropped it. One thing that definitely stuck, and that probably will stay, is the OCD titles I have now. I always want the name of the game, followed by the number of episodes, in Roman numbers of course, followed by the title of the video. It's always the same, it's always clean, and I hate titles that are like, what the hell is that? God of War episode 29. I hate the way it looks, I hate the all caps title, I hate it, I hate it. I'm never gonna use it, and hey, guess what? It's my video, my channels, my titles, bitch. I don't care about the views, I name my things the way I want them to be named. As long as it isn't silly standalones or the full experience. Wanna know a little fun fact about the music I used at the end of the Rocket League video? Eee, did I win? Did I win? Let me win! Yo! <laughs> I won against Poor Fox! <laughs> Yo! I am the master of this game, dude! That's the same music that plays when, Gotham spoilers, Jeremiah Valeska aka The Joker gets killed by the Batman. I never watched Gotham, but what I do instead is listen to the music. In fact, I listen to an ungodly amount of movie series and video game music, and I have a custom playlist with a lot of tracks and music that I still want to use in some scenario. That playlist is nearly 5 hours long. To make my point, I feel like I am creative with my craft and I have ideas, I just don't always know how to channel them. Maybe to quickly recap, Cuphead isn't coming back because I 300 percent to that game, meaning I got all the S ranks on all the bosses, which only took two offhand years, 
God of War isn't coming back because I defeated the Valkyrie Queen on the second hardest difficulty in Nostalgia Week. And Super Mario Odyssey Coinless isn't coming back because I'm burnt out of Odyssey. Go join the SMO Low Percent Discord, they're up to date with all Coinless stuff. Random games normally don't come back, but there is one exception. However, I will talk about that one when I get there. Super Mario Maker 2, in my mind, is a fairly sad part of the channel as a whole. Mainly because all my levels I showcased in the videos are changed or deleted, but the biggest issue I definitely have is the fact that I am unable to play any online game on Switch. My account, I don't know how or why, but my account has been blocked and it has disabled me to log in again, so that Luigi's Balloon World in Odyssey, or online play in Mario Kart, or making and uploading levels in Mario Maker is literally impossible. I contacted Nintendo's help servers or whatever for this already, and the problem is still not fixed. So yeah, I'm done with Mario Maker, unfortunately. One game I refuse to be done with is The Last of Us, because I absolutely love what I did with these videos. It has more stories, so you can kind of follow it, but the biggest and best change in style that's now become a trademark for so many videos is the music. For every stealth section or battle moment or something like that, I used music and I can still remember the first sequence the music I used was searching for a screenslaver from Incredibles 2. They definitely saw something, okay, at least I took out two of them, I suppose. No, 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 I don't have ammo! basically know all these music sequences by heart. It's so pleasant to rewatch stuff like that. Somehow I only got 5% completion for the Platinum Trophy, and since this game has online trophies, which always sucks since I bought it with PlayStation Plus, it was basically impossible for me to grind out that Platinum. But I will say this, The Last of Us Part 1 might come to the channel at some point if I find the time for it. Still, that's a very big if since I already have so much more planned, but the possibility exists. And if the achievements aren't too bad, I might 100% that game. After that, I did the Hollow Knight Without Dashing series, which I refer to as the 3AM series. Every single recording I did for that entire series was done throughout the night. I already have insomnia, which makes my sleep schedule by definition already awful, but in that time period it was basically completely backwards. I like the improvement compared to the first time I played Hollow Knight on the channel, but the recap video has weirdly loud music in the end, and I know why. That specific video I was editing while I was on a 3 hour train ride, which made it very difficult to properly hear how loud or silent everything was, and I could have changed that in the end, but I ended up not doing that for some reason. I feel like I could have done better and I didn't, but god, I will shame the ever-living shit out of the developers of Hello Neighbor for being able to do better and not doing so. This game is so unbelievably broken to the point where it's just a fucking meme. Every solution is way too obscure, super jank and doesn't work with the neighbor's AI. I remember being stuck on Act 3 where I needed to stack boxes on a stationary trolley, but it broke so I couldn't figure it out and I ended up taking like 45 minutes to fix that. Not only that, but I did some trophy hunting, because I actually got the platinum trophy casually. Let me walk you through some of them. So we're in Act 3, we get here, we jump out with the umbrella, and then there's this wall. Obviously, we can crouch walk through that, you come across this, and then you're out of bounds. But you're meant to be here, this was intentional. The grave of the neighbor's wife is here, which is slightly unsettling, but there's a couple of trophies in this area, and one of them is Don't Bite Snow White, with the magical description, Keep the Gold. I'll just let you figure out that one for a moment. So there's this road, which isn't properly lined up with the floor, which then obviously looks weird, and then there's a neighbor's house. 
and it's blocked by an invisible wall so you can't actually go back this way. Now back to the trophy riddle. You can either plant a seed and wait three in-game hours to grow a tree that produces a golden apple or you can come to the out of bounds section and knock another golden apple out of this tree. How are you supposed to find that? Not only that, but there's like 22 different versions of the same game, but it's just like pre-alphas and betas and demos and early versions and half-finished stuff. Like, put some fucking effort in the game you want to make instead of releasing 18,000 different unfinished versions of the same game. Overall, I did enjoy Hello Neighbor, but my god, the amount of times I had to look up solutions and strategies and bug fixes was absolutely insane. Anyway, that's my Hello Neighbor rant. After that, it was season two's finale time, which was six straight weeks of non-stop editing The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I spent 50 hours making a PowerPoint for all Korok seats when in the final 10 hours of actually playing, I realized I could just use the interactive map. But that, to be honest, wasn't the worst part. I really enjoyed Breath of the Wild as a whole, mainly because it felt like the most rewarding and satisfying end. To be able to get that 100% on a map and then go and beat Ganon, it was amazing. There was one issue that maybe already happened in previous videos, but I had some capture card issues. See, I was still at this point recording in one of the more complicated ways. I didn't use OBS and I still had the crappy microphone, so I was fairly limited on what I could do. So I recorded gameplay and game audio with Elgato software itself, and then I used a paused PS4 game to record my commentary through my headset microphone. Then I would take the gameplay and the audio from the PS4's paused menu screen, I'd merge them together, and then I would realize that my 4 hour recording froze after the first 20 minutes and just didn't record at all. So that's why you see these random 4 hour gaps in the timer, which I also layered on top of the recording in Camtasia. Now Camtasia is a $300 a year editing software with so many options, but here's the thing. I didn't pay $300 a year, I got a free version that some friends, who I won't name, provided me. The problem with a ripped version of basically any software ever is that it always crashes like every 5 seconds. So the whole process was as thus. Audio from an MP4 file on PS4, gameplay from a possibly crashed recording using Elgato software, then a timer which I layered on top of all that in Camtasia, which crashed every time I moved the slider, then rendering that giant file on my poor cheap school laptop, and then editing that put together recording in Movie Maker 2016 at the wrong resolution. Can you see why my older videos aren't as good as the ones I make now? And that was basically season 2. Oh wait, no, I forgot about the world records and tying up loose ends, yeah. N++ was fun, but it was just a random standalone idea that I wanted to make and I had room for, so I did. Hollow Knight's world record video was scripted, but it initially wasn't supposed to be that. I wanted great audio for that, and so I reached out to one of my friends, the one who also edited Polybridge, to see if I could lend his older microphone. It had like the arm and the clamp and the pop filter and all that, you know, the good stuff. So the plan was that I'd record using that, so I wouldn't need to record with my headset on for 9 hours, and then I would edit that into a live commentary video. What happened instead was after 8.5 hours, I realized I had been recording commentary through my $5 headphones. So yeah, I had to change it to a scripted video. The funny thing about the microphone was, my friend came by the evening before to set it all up and he was like, yeah, so you use this dial to change this and you can move this and so on. And he continued by saying, now the clamp to hold up the microphone doesn't always work properly. So what I usually do is I take a sock and suddenly he extracts a sock from his backpack and says, I usually take a sock and jam it in between the clamp. And he just clogs the clamp with this, I assume, unused sock. But it was the funniest sight ever. God. And then came the final video of season 2 and I broke my fucking head over this one. I knew I wanted to create a sort of villain or alter persona and I came up with fear. But I had no idea how I was going to combine that with the things I still wanted to say, which was Super Mario Odyssey Moons and the Overwatch World Record, by the way. Eventually I came up with an idea, I made it, I loved it, and I created a villain that would force me to play certain games and do certain challenges, otherwise he would take over. And I was happy with that for a while. But then came the burning question, what am I going to do to kill fear? And I will talk about this more when we get to whenever the original idea was supposed to come, but let's just say for now there is a reason this video is called Goodbye. Now then started season 3, and this is where things got really interesting, because first wait, of all... Wait, wait. Just one second. You said that you created fear because you wanted another persona in your story, right? Y yes Is it possible that you told yourself you wanted a villain, but instead some actual issue outed itself into your video? What I mean is, could it be that fear was not just born then, but was always somewhere in you? I mean, I've never felt his presence before, if that's what you mean. 
But actually, what do you mean? I believe that fear was always a part of you. Look, in our previous sessions you've told me about the slender bond you've had with your parents before they died. What you also told me is that the electroconvulsive therapy to treat your insomnia didn't make things better, but only worse. I believe fear arrived in your mind then. I think he grew up with you, knows something about your parents and how they died, and I also believe that making videos is your way of running away from the issue. I believe you're in denial. That's a river, river in, in Africa. Africa, yes. But here you are again, moving away from the subject. Tell me, have you ever been to a psychiatrist? Yes, but um... Are you wearing perfume? Um, not more different than usual, I, I guess. Hmm, yes. Some people enjoy the artificial smell of perfume. I thought I noticed a strong flavor when you came in already. It's I'm, really... I'm sorry, how is this relevant? Let's start over. Are you wearing perfume? That didn't really work out. Well, we'll leave it on the back burner for now. Would you like to continue? Uh, yeah, so... The, um... Uh... The start of a new season. Yes, thank you. So I started off with Donkey Kong Country Returns, which I had already played as a kid before, but I just wanted to relive the experience. And the same actually also happened with The Incredibles Rise of the Underminer. I just wanted to simply experience my childhood games again, and I did. And then came The Last of Us Part 2, and oh boy. I can see why the game's fanbase is so divided. First of all, it's a long game. Secondly, spoiler alert, Joel fucking dies in the most brutal way possible. And more, you're forced to play like at least 15 hours with his killer, Abby. The ending is extremely unsatisfying and you'll more than likely not pick up a brutal story game soon after playing this one. But then again, and this may be a controversial opinion, I liked all those bad things. I genuinely think the story is incredibly well written and it all makes sense. Both Ellie and Abby grow up in a desolate world full of death and suffering, so making their objective be revenge isn't such a bad idea. And it makes sense that this is the direction the game had to take, based on the ending of the first one. At first, I hated the fact that Joel's death was so brutal, and I was genuinely shocked for like a week. I seriously considered to stop playing, but it's meant to shock you. As the player, you're supposed to feel this intense hate for Abby. But then you learn Abby's part of the story, and you start to feel empathy for her. At least I did. She has the best gameplay elements and the best encounters, for a reason, I think. Uh, like the Rat King, for example, which might be my personal highlight based on how I edited that. Oh no... No... Uh. Oh... What the fuck? What the fuck? Ah, get me out! What the hell? Oh, no, 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 oh, what? Ah. Go through here. Oh, no. Get away from me. God. Oh. Go, go, go! God damn it, we have to go here. Mm. Come on, come on, come on. Go, 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 go. No! <gasps> Stab it! Uh. 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 Damn it, what? Okay. Oh, did it die? The four pipe bomb. What is happening? The four pipe bombs did something. God, what? That, that stalker crawled away. Okay. Oh my God, run away! Run away, do this, remove silencer, don't need it. Where's this strong gun? It takes one bullet at a time. That is a very weak bullet, uh, weak weapon. Okay, I'm just gonna go around in circles for a little while. Oh, that did something!
Is it done? <sighs> the game is long, and in the end you'll probably be as tired as both main characters are, but again, you're meant to be tired. This game is not just a game, it's a mental and psychological experience about what people can and are willing to do when faced with anger. The ending is unsatisfying, but it couldn't have ended another way. Let's say you got revenge. Would that have made it better? I don't think so. Overall, this is the game that revived my joy for editing, but damn, I will admit, this is one of the toughest stories I've ever had to be a part of. But again, it's meant to be that way. And after The Last of Us Part 2, something definitely changed. I wanted to put more energy in the content I made, so I upgraded basically every aspect of it. I bought an actually decent microphone, I learned how to edit in the free software that is DaVinci Resolve instead of Movie Maker, and I started using OBS, and immediately there was an increase in quality. The microphone was better, the recording quality was better, and it didn't freeze randomly anymore, and I could do way more in editing. So Horizon Zero Dawn, Doom Eternal, New Super Mario Bros. Wii Coinless, and the following 15 standalone games were all pretty much the best I could make them. They are so much better in audio and video quality, the commentary is solid, and the pacing even more so, and overall it's just fun and great content of which I can finally be proud of. Heavenly Bodies and Wii Sports Resort were the two games I played with Tijol, and those two videos are probably the most hilarious ones on my channel. In fact, if Tijol's up for it, and he probably will, Heavenly Bodies might return. That's the game that might come back. Gang Beast I played with LJ, who was a little bit camera shy and somewhat insecure about his English, but he's a good sport, and I heavily enjoyed that video as well. Polly Bridge is the one that one of my friends edited, and he truly did a splendid job of it. Horizon Zero Dawn is my magnum opus. It has the right balance of story and gameplay, all the battle sequences have music in them, making it so much cooler. My favorite moment has to be the one with the Stormbird, because I also layered green screen lightning on it, and added the thunder and rain in post-production along with the intense music. God, I hate the storm. Stormbirds are so far the most difficult, I mean, like... That Deathbringer? Nah. Easy. Compared to the Stormbringer, though? Okay, here we go. Okay, there we go. Oh, Jesus. Okay, now I need to find a way... Massive damage to this thing. So not like the damage I just did, which is not massive. God damn you, god damn you! Okay, Stormbird, you are just gonna move to What the fuck was that attack? That's good damage. This is good damage. That's good. That was really good. Maybe I'm figuring out how to do this. Come on. Go. Quick. Quick! Spin him down. Spin him down. Almost there. How the fuck... How many ropes do you need? There it is. Okay. Freeze bombs. bombs, freeze bomb, freeze bomb, and then these do 124 damage. Whoo, every arrow, let's go. Doom Eternal was the game that reignited my love for games in general, and I absolutely loved it. In fact, the Doom Eternal DLC will be coming soon. Kingdom Rush was pure nostalgia for me and I really liked the editing, and Jump King was similar to getting over its style of video, but now it was improved. I do want to talk about one standalone game being the last one, Doki Doki Literature Club. I was a bit afraid to start that game since it deals with some serious mental health issues and some fairly graphic moments that I was absolutely terrified of. But then I started to lean into the real story behind the game and I fucking laughed my ass off during that entire ordeal. It was meant to be worse though. The original idea was that fear would come up in Wii Sports Resort, but then I swatted him away because friendship with Tijol was more important, and this moment is actually in the video. A couple of videos later, fear would arise again, being in Doki Doki, and every bad moment he would make infinitely worse. 
But then there was another part of my brain that just said, Everybody stop! And I realized that having fear say, She deserved to die. She was unstable. Maybe it wasn't the best idea. And so luckily I didn't follow through on it. Then came Nostalgia Week. And I have to confess, I recorded Nostalgia Week in March 2022 for the most part. That's why the video seems so outdated compared to the rest. And then finally, at the end of Season 3, by Fear's request in tying up loose ends, I would come to play all 20 mainline Mario games 100% in 170 hours. The 170 hour thing was always planned, it was never going to be 180 hours. But one thing I didn't plan for is some microphone issues. You see, my microphone has some filters in OBS applied to it to balance audio perfectly for my style. But for some games, and I don't know why, but I think it has to do with me accidentally deleting the microphone path in OBS, it just reset itself to default settings, making the audio really crisp and hollow and way too loud when I yell. There's a real difference between the audio in Super Mario Galaxy and Super Mario Galaxy 2, for example. I think this has been the longest run I've ever done of any game. Can you imagine if the final boss mu music had like the doom to doom to doom to doom to doom to doom? That's my only regret for that series. But eventually I did it. It's one of the best, most hype moments on the channel to me. I literally was on the edge of crying tears of joy. Yes. Now we go to the middle. Oh, the camera turned. Oh, for fuck's sake. The camera turned. Go, go, go. Please. Please. <laughs> It's done! It's over! Please! Please let it end! Please! And... Time! Oh, 169 hours, 58 minutes, and 24 seconds! <laughs> it's done! It's over! Oh. <laughs> Finally! And that basically concluded Season 3, apart from one video. But before talking about that, let's take a look back and see what games are done and what games can't and or will come back. In Season 1 I did Celeste, Hollow Knight, Super Meat Boy, The Marvel Movies, Detroit Become Human, Sunder, Shadow of the Colossus, Until Dawn and all Mario games any percent. Of these games I got the Platinum Trophy, or 100% at them, and with these I'm just done with in general. The only thing that could return is Super Meat Boy, but we'll have to see when and how. The sequel to Hollow Knight, Hollow Knight Silksong, will come to the channel whenever that gets released. For Season 2, I played Cuphead, God of War, Super Mario Odyssey, Fall Guys, I Am Bread, Overcooked, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Getting Over It, Super Mario Maker 2, Overwatch, GTA 5, Rocket League, Valorant, League of Legends, The Last of Us Remastered, Hollow Knight, again, Hello Neighbor, and Breath of the Wild. I got the Platinum Trophy for these games, I 100%ed these games, and I'm just done with these. The Last of Us Part 1 might come to the channel, but I don't know if and or when. God of War Ragnarok will come to the channel, and may or may not be already in post-production, and Tears of the Kingdom will also come at some point in Season 4, but probably near the end. Season 3 is the biggest one, containing Donkey Kong Country Returns, The Incredibles Rise of the Underminer, The Last of Us Part 2, Breath of the Wild's DLC, Fireworks Mania, GeoGuessr, Polybridge 2, Kingdom Rush Tower Defense, Jump King, Horizon Zero Dawn, The Cuphead DLC, Gang Beast, Mario Party 9, Ultimate Epic Battle Simulator 2, New Super Mario Bros. Wii, Heavenly Bodies, Baba is You, Wii Sports Resort, Peggle, Crash Band, Bandicoot and Saint Trilogy, Doki Doki Literature Club, Doom Eternal and all Mario games 100%. These games I got the Platinum of, these games I 100%ed, and these games I'm just done with, leaving only heavenly bodies to return at some point. Yeah, I know, I know. Doom Eternal has 91% trophy completion and the only thing blocking me is these online battle mode trophies, so I didn't platinum it yet, but I'm also not done with it. It will probably not come back to the channel though, and I already have a video ready for Kingdom Rush's post game, but I only made that after writing the script for this video. So there you go. Crash Bandicoot It's About Time might come to the channel, and Horizon Forbidden West probably will. Doom 2016 will most likely weave its way in my life at some point, and maybe Donkey Kong Country Tropical Free might appear too. So in essence, there's a lot of ideas I still have from just sequels from games I've already played or unfinished business. I don't want to reveal too much, but the next two months are going to look like this. Tomorrow I start releasing a series of absolutely massive videos, which is basically recycled content but re-edited to change some issues I listed in the past 30 minutes. 
I end with the super cut of all Mario games 100% which I had to splice into because YouTube only allows a maximum of 12 hour videos and that one was like over 13 hours so whoops. Then the Doom Eternal DLC will come which I recorded ages ago and then the first 10 parter for a single game will come to the channel God of War Ragnarok. Then we will follow up with Resident Evil 7 and 8, followed by Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order and Ghost of Tsushima. Somewhere in the future, Assassin's Creed Odyssey will come along with Bloodborne, and some of the previously listed games will come too, like Tropical Freeze, Tears of Kingdom, Crash Bandicoot 4, Heavenly Bodies, Doom 2016, Horizon Forbidden West, and so on. Since this is episode 201 of The Good Life Horizons, and since official full series will begin from episode 220, I give myself until episode 300 for season 4. There won't be any big finale revolving around fear, but more on that in just a second. I will probably be doing something special near the end, but I'm still figuring it out. I cannot wait for all this cool content to come, and I already would like to thank you all for listening and watching. Do you still want to hear the initial idea I had in mind for the whole story about fear? Sure, go ahead. I will be listening with interest. So the actual plan was to write a one video 15 minute long story that would come to a conclusion right after the Super Mario 100% run. In that video I would actually die and fear would win making it my last video and naming it goodbye. Then that idea eventually branched out to a video with three endings, that eventually became 15 endings and then it felt like too much something Markiplier would do. So I thought what if I just write a story that's compelling and I try to animate that. So I set to work and for the past one and a half years I've been writing that story. First it was 10 episodes of 30 to 45 minutes, then it became 15 episodes. I had multiple characters and different story arcs and all of that. And I said, I'm gonna animate all of that using puppets, motion capture and inverse kinematics. But I can't animate and I tried but I still can't. So then I thought to make a graphic novel out of that. But I can't draw, I tried but I still can't. Then I thought I'll just make an audio drama of it. But that kind of defeated the purpose of me making videos. And I wrote too many different characters to be voiced by all my friends who wanted to participate. So eventually, I just dropped it and I would explain what the story was going to be if I could actually make it. But then a couple of friends said I should write a book about it. Or at least not just throw the story into the open. And now we're in this video where I don't really know what to do with it. I could give you a teaser of what it was going to be. Whatever you want. So, Fear initially is employed by the Timekeeper, who T. Gilbert voiced, to take over innocent souls, including the one of Vincent, the character that I would play. Now, after Fear killed my parents, which I don't remember anything of, Liam, my brother, covered it up and would leave, but then Fear is in reality good and feels sympathy for me, because he once touched the Orb of Love, one of five orbs created by Solus before the universe started. Eventually Liam comes back and Fear gets kidnapped by the Timekeeper, so me, Liam and Hope decide we need to save Fear, come on! So Liam goes to retrieve the Orb of Life in Chernobyl while Hope faces the Timekeeper. She also shatters the Orb of Love but then the Timekeeper, her ex-boyfriend, kills her. Fear gets sent back to Earth where Liam is but then Vincent hears a rumble outside the house and a giant troll sent by Thomas comes barging in like pow! Messing up the place. Then Hector shoots the troll and yells like get out of here! So Vincent takes Hope's body and runs out and then Hector blows up a gas tank so the entire house with the troll explodes like bam! And then later there's a fight against an army of thousands of undead soldiers and between Fear and the Timekeeper on an active volcano in Iceland but they win and create a whole new universe but then they need the orbs to come back so they all go back in time to steal it from their past selves to defeat Solus who is a giant water dragon now. And in the end, Fear, Liam, Hope, Thomas, Hector and Dr. Wilson sit around the dinner table until they eventually go their separate ways after saving the universe. So what do you think? Well, all of this gave me some really good insight on the way you think. But I still believe that fear was always in your mind, not in a made up story. In season 1 and a big part of season 2 you obviously didn't realize this or you didn't want to realize it. I believe that you were in denial in that period. Eventually fear took over one of your videos and got a hold over you. You first didn't want to believe it and you were angry for a long time as you've told me, which turned into bargaining. Every time fear came up you wanted to avoid the inevitable and change his ways. Throughout all Mario games you told me you were very depressed. There's only one step left in your process, Vincent. Acceptance. How do I just accept that fear's just in my mind all the time? There are certain parts about all this that I just can't accept. Of course you can. Anyone can. Well, what if I'm not like anyone? You tried ignoring it, and that didn't work. You tried fighting it, and you did a bloody well job of it. But even that failed, because all of it is still here, in your mind. It's real, okay? I've seen him, I heard him. How can I just have this whole story play out in my mind? I believe you try to project your own intrusive thoughts on this story. Tell me, what is the conclusion in the end? 
everyone sits around at the table. No, no, before that. But Vincent. Well, Vincent eventually realizes that the things he tried to blame on Jacob, his actual alter ego, are just things he did himself. He's the one who killed the real Jacob by pushing him off a tree, and he killed his own parents, not fear. So is it that unreasonable to think that the story isn't real and that all of this is in your mind? I mean, what's the difference? Who cares? I do! I care! Why? What does it matter if it's in your mind? You've shown you are a creative spirit and you can invent these intricate stories, but that doesn't make them reality. How the fuck am I supposed to deal with the fact that there's an evil entity that takes over every now and then when in reality it's all just me? At some point you will have to face the fact that it's getting too complicated to understand and too ridiculous to be real. I refuse to see that this is just all my behavior, my doing, Your my doing actions are not, not defined by this story yourself, you tried to pin on me, it's defined Vincent. by fear. Who's real? Fear isn't real! Accept it! The only thing that is real is you and your fucked up sense of justice! I acted upon justice because it was my duty! Your duty? Yes! Come on, Doctor, you know well enough what happened and still you are here talking to me as if I shouldn't be in jail. Is fear holding you back to act upon justice? You want the ultimate proof that you can make up these things as excuses for your behavior? Fine. You think I'm still sitting here? I'm not real anymore. You killed me two sessions ago. Well then, who the fuck am I talking to now? No one. And everyone. These people in your story are all based on your victims, Vincent. It's not true. You killed us. You created fear as an excuse. It's not true. He's not the killer. It's not true. You are. It's not true! It is! It is! How long until you finally realize that fear is just your own? You are fear! You give fear whatever name or body seems logical to you. I dare to bet it's going to be this body in a second just because it's convenient. Face it, Vincent. You are a bad person. I'm a good person. You killed Jacob by pushing him off a tree. You stabbed your father 28 times and beat your mother to death with a golf club. Sound familiar? Your brother Liam doesn't exist because you have no brother. He's based on one of your friends who you murdered after he beat you in a stupid video game. And Tijel's the worst one. You shot him after a personal vendetta over a girl who's based on hope. Every video you've made with anyone was either dead right after or dead before. Fear is just your imagination, something you could blame it on. But really all of this is you. You are a bad person. Fear is the body I'm squeezing the light out of right now. You are fear. Maybe I did all those things, but it was fear that drove me and he is weak. Jacob was a liar and mommy and daddy were addicts. Teacher was too smug about everything. He was a lost cause even before I saved him. They deserve to die, as do you. You can't tell what's wrong with me because there is nothing wrong with me. You. And that's the end of you, Fear. I'm just glad it's over. I was beginning to think I was beyond savior. Now, let's have some fun, shall we? The world is my playground. And I am just beginning. I can do anything. I just need to accept who I am. Shut up.